Hello, everyone. This is Billy Sheehan from Mr. Big, your bass player. You're watching me right here on BackstageAccess.com, where the real show begins. Thanks for watching. BackstageAccess.com, we're here with a very special guest, Buffalo, New York's own, very talented and bass legend, Billy Sheen. Billy, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Very kind of you to say all that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome home. Thank you. Have you done anything cool since you've been back, or is this pretty much just rush in and do the oh, show? Well, yeah, it's thing? usually rush in, but I did have a day off yesterday, so I got okay. to see a lot of my uh, family and friends, and yeah. hung out. it was fantastic, yeah. And I just seen you uh, enjoying uh, Buffalo's Finest Chicken Wings, Lenovo. Yeah, they are. In fact, <laughs> are. Is that the case that they are? In fact? I, I would say so. What do you think? Well, you know, I haven't been around long, you know, a long, long time. So right. uh, I gotta, I gotta, I should come back and do a, a chicken wing uh, yeah. sampling, resampling day. Right, right. Over right. all my favorite buffalo food again. Um, well, this is like you said, this is your hometown show, and I'm sure you're really excited to play in front of, f Very, yeah. you know, your uh, family and friends. Um, the latest release, What If, got really great reviews. What did the band think about that, you know, reading all those reviews? Well, we were surprised, you know, because when you do a record, you never know what's going to happen. You never know how people, you know, you like it and you do your best, right. of course, but you never know how other people are going to view it, you know. And, right. uh, so we rolled the dice and uh, a seven came off. So yeah. people seemed to enjoy it. So we were very, very thankful about it. And, uh, you know, uh, it's... Uh, it's it's a, it's a funny thing uh, putting a record out you know you it's it's a part of yourself and it's an emotional thing so if you get creamed and somebody hates it you know it's it hurts but mm -hmm. uh, i got to say if they if they like it, it it feels pretty good so we're very thankful about it what's the uh, how did the band put the record together was there a specific pattern that you guys follow or is it or did you guys well, we, we just, the only criteria we went in with is let's do it like we used to do our old records, okay. like our first two records, right. which we were all together in a room, yep. working on stuff, writing mm -hmm. things together, hanging out, uh, telling stories, yep. casual and fun, and that's how we wanted to write it. And then when we recorded it, we did it uh, almost completely live. So uh, it was very much like the, ver the first two records. And again, that's a process. We didn't know if the process would, would work or not, right. or if it would translate to a better record or what, you know, because you really never know. So sure enough, um, uh, again, the, the dice rolled. And the results <laughs> were really great, we obviously. And, and if yeah. you haven't picked up What If, you have to obviously go out and grab it. And right. um, when the band uh, got together pretty much in 2000, around 2009, yeah. how did that all come together? Because I know you guys, uh, you know, you were all busy doing whatever. And you obviously you're busy doing a lot of clinics and whatnot. Um, how did the band, like, how did it all start like, well, we, come uh, back together? I asked Paul to play a solo on my uh, solo record, Holy Cow. Okay. I had like three of my favorite musicians on there. Paul Gilbert, Doug Pinnock from King's X yes, Sagasone, yep. and Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top okay. laid a solo down. Right. And so it was really great. Ray Luzier from Korn played okay. drums. So we got me and Paul got to talking after he did the solo thing and uh, just had a great time. So it turns out he was playing a show, invited me to come on down because right. our drummer Pat from Mr. Big yep. was going to be on the same bill okay. with uh, with. Uh, uh, the opening band with Richie right. Okay. So uh, we all got together and said, well, we should go up and play. Okay. Right. So we did. And after we did, the people went nuts. Yeah. It was incredible. You know, we didn't right. know how they'd respond. You know? right. And uh, it was just amazing. So we said, man, the only thing that would have been better is if Eric would have been here. You mm -hmm. know. So sure enough, a couple of weeks go by, a few emails bounce back and forth. And then uh, sure enough, uh, Eric came down to L.A. We had a nice dinner and hung out. And the good thing about it is we got to hang and just be friends like we were when the band started right, again. Right. So even and I said even at the time, and I still say, even if we would have never have played or done anything, it was already worth it to me because we got to hang out, okay. you know, these guys that I had my biggest success with, and all of us so really had some great times together. So, so then we just said, well, let's let's do some playing. And, and then it all happened. And you guys are obviously doing a bunch of, you're right in the midst of a tour. Uh, is there any possibility of doing a live DVD possibly for one of the shows? I don't know. Uh, I haven't heard. So uh, I'm rarely in the loop on that stuff. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. a lot of times somebody, somebody will have like a DVD or an album and right. bring it up for me to sign. And I, I go, what is this? I, never, I had no idea this was out here. <laughs> 
So uh, I'm pretty disconnected from that part of it. Um, you guys are obviously really big in Japan, and that kind of jump started us a little bit too. You know, with the shows in Japan a little bit, right? Well, a little bit, but we do. Um, that's the cliche thing that everybody uh, defaults to. But in fact, right. uh, Taiwan is awesome for us. Thailand. In, I get more email from Indonesia than anywhere. Uh, Korea is just an amazing spot for us. And mm. Italy, there's like five Mr. Big Copy bands. Wow. Spain, every time we play Spain, it's out of control. The UK, uh, France, we do great in Paris and all over Germany and Scandinavia. Mm. So, you know, people automatically default to Japan, 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 Japan. Right. But in fact, you know, we, we, we have a lot of uh, wonderful people that support us all over the world, including here in the USA. So we're, we're very pleased about it. And you guys did some dates in March, uh, right after actually uh, the devastation that happened there. What was the reaction? I mean, how did that like obviously affect you as a musician going to oh, yeah. doing something like that? We um, we didn't know if we would be able to play there, and right. we just kind of waited. We we're on hold until the promoter gave us the all clear, and then when he did, he said, you know, you can come on over. We had to cancel one of the shows. This was in one. It was a really hard hit spot, right? So they couldn't host a show. But every place, every place else we played, they had it very together. We're there uh, primarily to support uh, the people uh, after such a tragedy to kind of bring their spirits up. Because mm -hmm. like after 9-11 in New York City, a lot of people said, you know, come down to New York and go mm -hmm. to a dinner and see a movie. You know, right. we need to get people out again and yeah. commerce happening. So that's kind of what we were doing. And we, we ended up raising about $150,000 for a tsunami earthquake relief for the Red Cross. We got a wonderful letter from the uh, Japanese consulate in Washington, D.C., thanking us for going down there. So I think we did a lot of good. And if so, I'm very pleased about it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you guys going over there right after the devastation and knowing how big you guys are, I'm sure the fans over there really appreciate that. And yeah, the, took that to heart. Yeah, the email and the uh, regular mail that we get at the gigs was amazing. We had a lot of aftershocks while we were there, too. You know, every, every once in right. a while, here we go again. Or maybe that was your base, you know, it could have been, <laughs> right? <laughs> An echo of the base. Um, your one song, Daddy, Brother, Lover, Little Boy, I mean, that's just such a, uh, a different type of song that's, you know, you guys, uh, you and Paul incorporate these uh, electric drills. Yeah. You know, how, who came up with this idea? It's just well, like somebody said to Paul, Paul before Mr. Big, somebody said to Paul, man, you play so fast, the only way you can play faster is you put drills, you know, picks on the end of a drill and turn this over. Oh, right. That's funny. So it's sort of as a joke. They did one. They made one. Okay. And so uh, Paul used it a, a bunch in his solos on the first tour and then... We're doing the second record, and uh, we thought, well, let's let's do it in harmony. Let's go two drills, and we did a little harmony, bass, and guitar drill thing. But it was meant for comedy. Right. We do a lot of things that are meant for comedy. <laughs> well, Some, sometimes people don't know. <laughs> sometimes people don't know that it's comedy, and that's okay. that's disappointing sometimes. But it's how could we be serious? You know, it's, right. a, it's just a joke. It's a great song, though. Obviously, it's one of the staples when you can see you're live. Everybody looks forward to seeing that. You great. Know, with, I'm with glad the to door. hear. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just going back and uh, going back in your career. Um, everybody probably knows that you play with Daily Roth for a little bit and with Steve Vai. Uh, it was just an amazing, and Greg Bissonette as well, who was a fantastic drummer. And uh, was there ever any talk of going back to like getting that band back together? Was there ever anything? I haven't heard of it yet, but no. I, I sure would love to. At some yeah. someday, who knows what happens with the, the Van Halen situation? Yeah. If Dave decides he wants to you know, history repeat, I'm I'm ready to go. He's still my hero, and I love him. And okay. my time, I need him and smile with. It was uh, just uh, was a great, great, wonderful adventure, and I'm, I'm very, very pleased to be there. David, get this band back to uh, That was just an amazing <laughs> project. It was just, you know, the four, cool. uh, yeah, I, I wish I, I got to see I was really young at the time. That's why No I'm matter where like, I go, people come up to me and, yeah, say, and that, I'm signing yeah. Needham and Smile Records. Right. In Indonesia, in Malaysia, they got them, you know. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So we, we had an impact. I'm very pleased about it. Uh, your other project, uh, Niacin, uh, what's going on with that? We're waiting for Dennis to get a break so we can record our new record. Okay. He's a pretty busy guy, and I've always been with Santana the last few years. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but hopefully we get him, uh, get him free and do another Niacin record. I was a blast playing with him and doing those records. Very and cool. and Talos, obviously, too. You know, we're doing this interview in Buffalo, and that's a uh, Buffalo staple of rock is, uh, is that band. Uh, you did a bunch of reunion stuff uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Is there going to be any time where you're going to revisit that, maybe do some more? Or? I hope so. We tried to do it in the summer. It didn't work out, okay. scheduling and whatnot. But uh, maybe next summer. I'd love to. Cause, uh, I love those guys. We grew up together. Yep. And they're both going to be here tonight. Yep. Dave's playing. Paul's yep. hanging. So uh, I'm looking forward to hanging with both of them, and I'd love to do some more playing anytime. 
Um, you collaborate with a bunch of uh, various musicians out your illustrious career, and is there somebody out there that you haven't played with that you really want to, and why? Uh, Paco De Lucia. Okay. Because he is a living legend and a grandmaster, and if, uh, I don't know if I could keep up with him, but I mm. sure would like to play uh, in the same uh, in the same room with him someday. Okay. So that's out there. If you're listening or you hear this, <laughs> there's there you put planting the seed, Go and ra and wrapping up to um, obviously you got this tour going on. What can the fans expect from you and Mr. Big the rest of 2011? Oh, well, it's just a lot of playing, a lot of hot, sweaty rock and roll. We finish in the USA. We go over to Europe to headline. We finish there. We do Indonesia and a couple other Southeast Asian shows. Um, I heard there might be some Central America in there also. We already did okay. South America. And uh, probably some more things I don't know about because I'm always the last to find out. I was going to say because you don't even know what CDs are. You're like, oh, okay, I played on this, right? Yeah, right. Um, it's funny. Any uh, Anything out to your fans you want to say out there? Obviously, you're home in Buffalo, New York right now, but anything else you want to say to... Well, just uh, how much I love and appreciate all my years in Buffalo and how much uh, how much they mean to me mm. and how much they made me a better player and a better person. And it's a pleasure to be back here in Buffalo again. And uh, I can't wait to do my absolute best for all my fa friends, mm, yeah. family, and fans that are here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, definitely check out Mr. Big. Uh, if you haven't got What If, you definitely have to go out and grab it because it's uh, definitely some of their best work, if not their best work they've ever done. Thanks, bro. Uh, check out Mr. Big on the road. Go to, I believe, MrBig.com. Is that the website? It's Mr. Big Site, S-I-T-E. Okay, MrBigSite.com. Check out Billy. Billy, do you got a site you want to? I'm BillySheen.com. It has been updated for a long time, but you can go there to email me, though. Okay, go there and email him. <laughs> check out uh, anything on all Billy and Mr. Big. And BackstageAccess.com, thanks for taking the time.